So just wanted to, first of all, give disclaimers, and I have no conflicts of interest, and I do not receive any form of uh, payments from Synaptive. And I want to acknowledge Rod, who's uh, really launched this uh, Seattle Science Foundation into a whole new sphere, and he's the greatest partner you can imagine. And again, the fact uh, that we have Synaptive here is, again, uh, exemplary of this privademic system that we have here, which is very unique. And this would have never happened in my place of previous employee because it, again, requires a lot of flexibility, investment, and collaboration willingness, which is, again, possible here. Um, and Johnny and uh, Rod have really changed this around. I'm a fan of Monty Python, and I'm not going to liken uh, Synaptive to Monty Python. But basically, what we're going to ask all of you to do, and what we ask ourselves to do, is uh, follow the probably most famous line of all, and that is, now for something completely different. I don't have the, the John Cleese accent, uh, but uh, you can all, I think, imagine, and I see by your nods that all of you kind of like this. And what I see is, uh, just conceptually speaking, is that this opens up a whole new, different world of uh, what we have. And again, the beauty of Monty Python was they changed the game in terms of comedy and opened up barriers and uh, uh, really open up venues that we had not thought of possible before. Again, we're, I always like historical context, and the microscope actually dates back to 1675 for Robert Hooke, and in the initial stages, it was a monocular kind of a uh, setup, um, and it's obviously come a long way. John has addressed that already. We're basically used to, and we find some reassurance in having an inline working portal. So we feel that there's a collinearity of our optical cortex to what we're doing with our hands. There's a direct continuum. And again, the thought of binocular vision, which was the big adaptation later on, uh, was a, a really big deal because we feel we have the imagery of stereoscopy. So we have a depth perception, which is not a trivial deal um, as long. Thank you. See, this is, this is your best partner, you can imagine. So this uh, binocular vision is a really big deal. Here we see uh, David Paulson working with uh, uh, single-hand caret action, which is something that uh, Dr. Hanscom would not approve of. But um, again, he feels reassured by having binocular vision. All of us have had raccoon eyes uh, in the morning, and again, stereoscopy and binocular vision uh, becomes a little bit old. And it is limited in terms of the optical trajectories that we can have. So wouldn't it be nice to have a seeing eye, which actually augments uh, reality in ways that we've not thought of before? And again, remember, what we're seeing here, I think, is the platform of something new possible. So yes, there are obviously, and this is why this theme of uh, really espousing the thought of doing something completely different is so important. Um, having an open field, more or less, in which you can use um, an optical enhanced uh, instrumentation to help you do your surgery will require ergonomic changes. We'll probably have some adaptations and some optimizations, but it'll also mean that you work around a corner, more or less. So you have to resynthesize your brain. We, and this is what I wanted to briefly talk about, did two comparison studies, and Mark Moisey deserves great praise for that. We studied four medical novices, college students, and we compared microscopy to servo, and we did a simple laminectomy on them. And again, uh, they basically, we just gave them instructions. We stood at a monitor, both with microscopy and with uh, the servo instrument, and basically gave them advice. We had trained them on how to do a laminectomy. Again, none of them had medical context before. Uh, conflict of interest to one of these college volunteers was my daughter, seen here, but uh, she has not done any surgery before. And uh, we had questionnaires for them, we rated them, and basically this has been accepted for publication right now at Curious uh, 2016. Three out of four clearly favored the servo, all favored teaching and picture quality of the servo, one concerned voice was, uh, I'm not in line with my work. It's kind of an uncomfortable feeling to not see directly in front of me. So uh, that person was, interestingly, also the oldest of the four. The three younger ones all were very enthusiastic and caught on in an amazingly fast fashion. All of them pointed out that it was awesome to basically have your professor or teacher point to something on the screen and direct their tools there. And depth perception was not an issue. The quality of the work was all equal. And again, uh, the ability to point to the screen and this teaching capability, which may or may not apply to your practices, was a really big deal for all. We did a comparison study with fellows, which took a lot of work um, from Mark. And uh, again, we looked at surgical trainees and saw how they would do. 
and we looked at personal preferences, quality of executions, uh, using cadaver laminotomy models. Each surgeon performed 20 laminotomies. We had three faculty raters who were blinded to technique and surgeons. I'm not going to show you the actual results. I'll give you a summary. But uh, we had some blinded raters. This was not done from the study, but this is doing uh, technique training for craniotomies here. And we found basically working angles, ergonomics, team involvement, visual enhancement, opportunities of teaching to be clear pros. Uh, surgeon limits in some surgeons where depth perception, the setup, and working versus visualization corridors were big differences. So the comparison study of the fellows showed that quality and safety of the laminotomies were equal. So we tested that. We had a rating system, as mentioned. Uh, the preference, clearly superior pictures uh, for servo, and the workflow was equal for all. So basically what I'm telling you here is this was something where we're just emerging with studies to try to understand how we do our work that we've so uh, become familiarized with and how we can do it best. This is, I see this as a platform for the future. And as Johnny pointed out with bright matter and other things, we can truly have an optical eye that can do so much more than our human eye could ever think of doing. So all of you will basically be first ones to see this technology platform and see uh, where and what we should do for a validation of concept and where it can take us. So. Mm -hmm.